Good morning, Cornerstone Kids, and welcome to See Kids Online. If you're new here, my name is Pastor Jessica, and we are starting a brand new series this month. It is October, and our series is called Game Show, The Choice Is Yours. Game Show, The Choice Is Yours. Have you ever watched a game show? I love game shows. They're so fun. They get you going, and you learn lots of new stuff when you're watching a game show. So that's what we're going to do today. We've got memory verse. We've got worship. We've got a Bible story for you and your parents where you can sit down and learn something new from God's word today. This month, we are talking about self-control. Self-control is choosing to do what's right even when you don't want to. Let's say that together. Self-control is choosing to do what's right even when you don't want to. Sometimes it's hard to make the right choice, but you're always ready to make the right choice when you listen to the voice of God, when you listen to the Holy Spirit and what you're doing, when you open the word of God and you read, when you pray, when you talk to him, when you build your relationship with God, you are ready to make the right choice. Before we dive into God's word today, let's worship together. So grab your family, your friends, anyone that's around you right now, and let's lift our hands, let's praise, let's shout, and thank God for who he is. Let's go. Whenever I'm in need and I'm looking for help, God, you're always there for me. Wherever you lead me, I can follow you. God, you're always there for me.
great job worshiping, you guys. I love singing together with my family. Me and my kids sing together all the time in our house. We love it. We just have worship on all the time. I would encourage you to do that because it really changes the atmosphere in your house. I love, love worship. All right, let's get into our brand new memory verse for the month. Our memory verse is found in 2 Peter 1, 3, and this is what it says. God's power has given us everything we need to lead a godly life. We're gonna say that together. God's power has given us everything that we need to lead a godly life. When we read God's word, when we study who he is, the character of God, we learn from him. We learn how to follow him and listen to him and read his word and know him so much better. And when we do that, we know how to live like Christians. We know how to live like God. Right now we're going to learn a brand new story from God's Word and it's new because it tells us something new every time we read it. You can read a story a million times but guess what? God is going to reveal something new to you every time you open up His Word and you listen to His voice. So today we're going to open up our Word. Grab your Bible, come back here and sit down and let's listen to this true story from the Bible. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're taking a look at the story of someone who faced a really tall temptation. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sanjay. This month, we're talking about how we can trust God to help us do what's best. Some decisions are easy, like should I try out for a sports team? If you like being active, competitive, and spending a fun time with your friends, the answer is an easy yes. But some decisions can be difficult. Like trying to decide which sport to try this year. Basketball, soccer, or volleyball. All three balls are kind of similar. But the actual games are pretty different. So many options. Uh, what am I going to do? You have just spoken the secret phrase. Secret phrase? What did you say? I said, what am I going to do? You have just spoken the secret phrase again! And now you've initiated a choice challenge! Oh, like practicing choices? Yes! Today's decision-making game is meal or no meal. Are we talking real food here? Because I can always use a snack. <laughs> Let's play it! Meal or no meal! This is the game where you make choices to put together a complete lunch. Your job is to view two images and choose the best option. Seems easy enough. Here is your first choice. Is this real? You can't eat boots? Obviously we're choosing grilled cheese. Is that your final answer? Yes, of course, it's a grilled cheese sandwich. You have chosen grilled cheese sandwich. Here is your second choice. Well, they are both orange. The carrots look like tiny little bricks. If you cut them right, you can make a tiny little edible log cabin. Edible. That's our keyword here. So we choose carrots, of course. Is that your final answer? Um, yes. You have chosen the carrots. I don't see the challenge in this challenge. Here is your third choice. There it is. They both look like soup. The red one's really red. Maybe it's actually ketchup? The orangey one seems like it has a little more texture. Hold on. The red one. That looks like a rim. Like the rim on a paint can. Ew. <laughs> no paint for lunch. I think the other one is tomato soup. We're going to go with that one. Is that your final answer? Yes, definitely. Here is your final choice. Ooh, this one's tricky. Maybe they're both water? They're both clear liquids. Maybe we can tell from the bottle? Well, one's a twisty top. And that one has a fancy top. Aren't those fancy ones used for oil and vinegar? Vinegar, Ugh. Let's go with the twisty cap. Is that your final answer? Yes. yes. You have completed the meal or no meal challenge. You've chosen a grilled cheese sandwich, carrots, tomato soup, and a bottle of vinegar. We chose the vinegar. Enjoy your meal. Well, that was a fail.
first choices were so easy. But the last one, hard pass on drinking vinegar. You gotta know when to say no. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Luke, in the New Testament. But long before, in the very beginning, God created a wonderful world. When people turned away from God, the world was broken. At the perfect time, God sent a rescuer, God's own son, Jesus. Jesus came as a baby. Over the years, he grew in wisdom and showed love to God and to others in everything he did. When Jesus was about 30, he came to the Jordan River to be baptized by his cousin John. As Jesus rose up from the water, God spoke from heaven and said, you are my son and I love you. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hi everyone, I'm Erica. Jesus had just been baptized by his cousin, John. Everyone heard the voice of God say that Jesus is God's son. You'd think this would be the perfect time for Jesus to begin his ministry, right? But instead, God's spirit led Jesus into the desert. For 40 days, Jesus chose not to eat anything as he focused on spending time with God. Can you imagine going 40 days without food? No pizza or french fries or even bread. By the end of this time, Jesus was not just a little hungry, he was mega hungry. And that's when his enemy, the devil, showed up with a sneaky plan. If you are the son of God, tell this stone to become uh, bread. It is written, man must not live only on bread. Let's just pause for a second. Jesus had God's power. He could have turned that stone into a nice toasty loaf of bread. But Jesus knew the devil was tempting him to take the easy path. Jesus had spent his whole life studying scripture and learning God's words. They were rooted deeply in his heart. So in the moment, Jesus knew exactly what to say. But the devil wasn't done yet. The devil led Jesus to a high place and in a flash showed him all the kingdoms of the world. I will give you all their authority and glory. I can give it to anyone I want. If you worship me, it will all be yours. It is written, worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. Again, Jesus had God's words in his heart and mind. He was ready to respond. At last, the devil led Jesus to Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. It is written, the Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. They will lift you up in their hands. Then you won't trip over a stone. Now, the devil was using scripture too, but Jesus was still ready. He knew it wasn't about demanding something from God. Scripture says, do not test the Lord your God. <gasps> Fine, have it your way. Then the devil left Jesus until he could try tempting him again later. And God sent angels to come and take care of Jesus. Jesus came to earth to rescue us. He knew that meant a difficult path and that in the end, he would have to give up his life. The devil was tempting Jesus to take the easy way out, but Jesus had spent his life studying and understanding God's words. So when the time came, he was ready to make the hard choice and do the right thing. The end. No food for 40 days? Yeah, I can't imagine going 40 more minutes without lunch. When I'm hungry, I don't usually make good choices. You and me both. But Jesus had practiced doing the right thing for a long time. So, what's, what's our part, part in the story? story? Well, Jesus faced some incredibly difficult choices, but he had spent his entire life preparing for that moment. God's words were ready in his heart and in his mind. So he was able to show self-control. 
Self-control is about choosing to do what's best, even when you don't want to. That's right. And just like Jesus, we can spend time discovering who God is and what God says, so we can be ready to do the right thing. So that's reading the Bible and memorizing verses, right? Absolutely. But it also means talking with your parents and other trusted adults about what God says. It means asking lots of questions. You can even get ready for tough choices before they even happen. Good point. Like, you know that sometime in the next few days, your little brother will probably do something that frustrates you. Maybe he wrecks your Lego set. I'd want to scream if that happened, or maybe even throw something. That's the moment where you ask God for help. You can remember that God wants us to be kind to each other and forgive one another, just like God forgives us. Or maybe your mom just made these delicious chocolate chip cookies, but she says you can only have one before dinner. But then she leaves the room and you really, really want two cookies. That's when you can pause and remember that God wants us to honor and respect our parents. So you can ask God for the self-control to listen to your mom. And stop at one cookie. You got it. I think you're both ready to do the right thing. <laughs> See you next time. So here's the thing. Be ready to do the right thing. All this choosing is hard work. Right? Makes me thirsty. Want one? Is it vinegar or water? Both water, I promise. Good choice. Mm -hmm. Now, how about you help me choose which sports to play? Maybe all of them. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh. Thanks for joining us at the Story Lab. See you next time. Today in our true story from the Bible, we heard about Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. I've been tempted before. Have you ever thought about doing something that you weren't supposed to do? Or maybe a friend or a family member said, hey, let's go do this. But you knew that in your house, that was not okay. You are not supposed to do those things. Sometimes that can be hard to say no. It can be hard to do the right thing, especially when you have all of these people and friends around you that are telling you to do something you're not supposed to do. You wanna do that. You wanna go do the wrong thing sometimes, but it's hard. And you know what? Self-control, what we're talking about this month, self-control will help you do the right thing. Our bottom line says, be ready to do the right thing. Let's say that together. Be ready to do the right thing. With God, we can do the right thing. We can be ready to do the right thing. And how we do that is by, again, reading his word, reading the Bible every single day, praying, listening to the Holy Spirit and the voice of God when he's telling you, hey, let's not make that choice. Let's make a different choice. When we do that, we will always be ready to do the right thing because God will always point us in the right direction. Before we go, let's pray together and let's thank God for giving us his word, for being here with us and for showing us how to live like him. Jesus, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for the Holy Spirit that we are able to hear your voice, we're able to listen to you, and that we are able to do the right thing in situations where it might be unclear, where we might be confused, or where people might be telling us the wrong thing. God, we hear your voice. We want to listen to you. Give us wisdom and give us courage to always be ready to do the right thing. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Parents, you can download supporting parent resources on our page. So make sure you go over there to cornerstonenashville.org backslash parent resources and find our devotionals that go with each and every lesson each week. We will see you next time for a brand new story from the Bible. See you later.